All right, uh, so we're going to call the meeting for the Capital uh, Improvement Planning Committee. Uh, meetings normally held in the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required. Public participation provided in accordance with Governor's March 12, 2020 open uh, order su suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL 30, section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799. Uh, the toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The passcode, uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580, passcode 570012. All right. So um, yeah, I guess we can get started. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for um, nominating me, um, Carolyn. Um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I did speak with Carolyn first, so um, I, I don't think that that was punishment for not coming to the last meeting. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, so I went through and took a look at everything, um, you know, from the last recording, and um, I kind of had some follow up items. I'm not sure if we should go through the list again, um, or if we, you know, should just kind of dive into the things that we all wanted to follow up on. Um, I guess it's it's up to the um, up to the group, but. One thing I will say is, I guess, like for all the meetings going forward, we'll probably want to update that spreadsheet that we had from FY22. Um, I think that might have been something that either Jack or Casey might have um, worked on. So I'll make sure that gets updated so it's a little bit easier to keep track of these items. Um, so I'll, I'll try and have that for our next meeting. Right. Um, so, yeah, um, th does anyone have any recommendations for where we want to start? And I, I don't know, Carolyn, if, if you want to. Go th should we go through the list or you know just start with follow-up items? Denise, I see that you've got your hand up. I'm just gonna say that um, we're at another meeting last night. Kate Lawless said that she would attend in case we had any questions. So, you know, now's a good opportunity if we have any questions for her on the town common on, on that funding, may as well ask them while she's here if we, you know, if we have them. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions for Kate? So is this for the town common rehabilitation? Is that, is that the one? That's right. Okay. Um, my only question was in regard, and I don't know if it's, if it's part of the plan, um, but is there any, any thought of trying to, and I know it's not easy to do always, but try to put some of the utility lines underneath um, the surface as things are getting improved or, or not? That is something that has come up and people have asked about that. Um, I think it's been said that it's very, very expensive. Um, I don't know exactly if, I don't think there are any like utility poles on the common. We really only there have a restriction to that little plot. Sorry, someone asking something else. Um, so I would say that probably won't be part of the plan as far as I can tell. Okay. I know there's two, two poles on the commons. I just was more just wondering about those two, but. Oh, there are. Well, I'm wrong. Sorry. <laughs> um, then it, it hasn't come up to the degree that, um, you know, we're involved in addressing it in this, you know, plan as it is written right now but it's yeah. certainly something we're going to have okay. um, an information session um, next uh, mm -hmm. Thursday the 13th um, and I can certainly bring that to that meeting when we'll have the designer there and we can um, you know add it to the mix of things we need to kind of consider at a more detailed level okay all right thank you mm -hmm. Yes, Denise. I was just going to say, I think that's a great idea because I know the park, uh, the plans are to put utility poles under. So, you know, it's an opportunity. I'm sure there's going to be an expense associated with it, but I think that's, I think that's a great idea. If, uh, visually, it'll possible. be better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I, th I think last time we, you know, we talked about this and I think Trevor was on the last time and, you know, I, 
I understand why we can't do Park Street because the state still owns it and it's, it's, a, it's a problem. But um, I think I did ask the question that once everything is done and at some point if we do acquire Park Street, is it going to be, would it be difficult to expand the park? Right. Um, you know, our, the designer is aware of that being a possibility. So we're really going to try to kind of, you know, include that into our plans so that that could be uh, a future step, a phase in the future, um, as well as possibly, you know, we have had a lot of suggestions about extending Grave Street out a little bit so that that, you know, the traffic there is a mess. Uh, we understand that and there's so much asphalt, it's really a safety hazard. So um, these are all kind of, you know, problems we're trying to solve within our very limited purview. Um, and it would be great if in the future Park Street could be closed off and we um, are very aware that that is a desire by many people in the community. Um, so yes, I think we are um, going to ensure that in the future, that is a direction we can go in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Kate? Not right now. All right. Um, cool. So um, yeah, I guess um, there were some follow-up items that, that, that I had from the last one. So I think one of the things that we were going to check up on was the sidewalk, sidewalk project. Uh, do we have any updates from that, Carolyn? No, um, we haven't been able to find out anything. Um, we're hoping to set up a meeting with DOT. So um, that hasn't happened. It was supposed to be this week, but we haven't been able to get that organized. So um, hopefully within the next meeting or two, um, because the sidewalk project is supposed to be part of that transportation bond bill and the upgrade of the entire Sugarloaf Street and everything that the state owns in their attempt to upgrade everything so that we could go to town meeting to accept the road as a town road but uh, and take it over. But it doesn't make sense uh, that they're not doing the catch basins and then the sidewalks. So just randomly do the sidewalks is not what we had. I mean, yes, the sidewalks need to be done. We're not complaining about that. But we really need the infrastructure underneath to be done first. Uh, and that is part of the turnover process. So we've got to have some kind of intervention and discussion with them because if they're not going to do the catch basins, that's not going to be part of what we're going to accept then. Because the, the drainage needs total drainage needs to be updated to um, you know climate change resiliency standards at least. So uh, <clears throat> we haven't found out anything more, Mark. So um, make sure that we have. Do do we have an idea when we're going to meet next again? Just offhand, probably not. Um, well, oh, sorry, gonna, go ahead. No, I just didn't know how you had you hadn't given any thought to how you wanted us to proceed. Um, because I want to make sure that we have some information for our next meeting on this because I think this is pretty important. Yeah, yeah. So um what I what I kind of want to do is just follow up with like any outstanding items that we've got and then uh hopefully get uh a spreadsheet like the FY22 that we had and start assigning priorities to some of these items. I remember when we did this last year. We kind of almost went through two two phases of information gathering. We kind of had our initial scoping, then we started going through and trying to prioritize it, and other questions came up. So, um, you know, definitely want to provide adequate time for that. I don't know if you know meeting next week would be uh, in like a week or two. You know, would be too aggressive, but I know that we probably want to get this this going. Um, I don't know if we want to wait like a full month before meeting again, but yeah. I was, I was kind of thinking meeting within the next few weeks to kind of start uh, ranking some of the, or prioritizing some of these things. Okay, I'll try to get that information, at least some information regarding this so that we can have information on the town common. Um, because what the town common project has to take care of some of that um, asphalt and 
or we can get DOT maybe to be is the upgrade to take care of some of that. And we won't, would want it to wrap in with this project one way or the other. So we need to get them on board with what uh, and, and connected with Kate so that um, the plan has some, some seamless um, synergy there. So I'll try to get that answer within the next week or two. Okay. Um, I guess to, to that end for, you know, the other folks on the call, what, what would be your, you know, opinion on when we meet next? How about the 26th? 26th? Yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks would be good. Yeah, we can pull up my calendar then. Wednesday. Oh, wait, is that, does that conflict with your, with um, select board coordinating? Select board is at six. Um, it's hard, oh. it's hard for um, uh, yeah. Mark to meet early, so. Yeah, usually the earliest I can get started is about 5.36, um, so. Kip, do you have a finance committee meeting on the 25th? You know, I, I, I really did. We, we set a whole bunch of meeting dates uh, last night and then we bounced them back and forth. Uh, so I really don't have a list of those meetings. Because uh, you usually meet at five. So we could have actually. Uh, yeah, we, I think that part, I think we're planning on meeting at five, but whether we meet on Tuesdays or Thursdays. I think we chose not to meet on Wednesdays because typically the board, is, the select board is meeting uh, Wednesdays. Well, Mark, uh, we could meet at 6.30 or 7 on Tuesday. Yeah, or would, would a different day work better for, for folks, like like, a, like Mondays? Oh, Skip has um, assessors. Do you have assessors on the 25th? Yeah. Uh, assessor, not on the 25th. No, we have on the 1st and the 3rd, so the 18th would be a meeting. Okay. So the 25th is open. Well, yeah, I mean, I can do the 25th. Okay, why don't we why don't we try for the twenty fifth? Yeah, let's keep a running tab of what we want for um, that meeting on the twenty fifth. And the first sure. item we have is the infrastructure. What what time? Six thirty. What time? Six yeah. six thirty. Yeah, because um, yep. the finance committee committee meeting is at five usually. Okay, so six thirty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six thirty would be good. Okay. Sounds good. Um, okay, so we have the first pro, uh, first thing is the infrastructure on um, town uh, state-owned property there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, actually, so um, maybe we probably should just go through each of these items and then just see if there's anything that we have outstanding. So I guess just starting with the beginning of the packet, um, we've got the, the town common rehabilitation, which we just talked about. Um, and thank and, you. Uh, if there's nothing else you need from me, I'll drop off. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so thank much you. for coming. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank um, so the next item in the packet is the uh, Leary lot. Um, I think in the last meeting, um, this was kind of discussed along with the town common, possibly tying into this. Is that, is that still the case? Yes. Um, we were just discussing on our MVP program uh, meeting today that we were going to peel off the um, green kind of things on this parking lot design that was is already designed. Uh, permeable, uh, permeable pavers, uh, you know, the green um, tree boxes, the green spaces, all that kind of stuff, um, and peel that off the top and put that in an MVP grant so that, uh, but the funding still is going to be our ARPA funding. Um, and we do have a design uh, that we had from the MVP uh, previous, that was paid for by the MVP grant previously. So I think we could, um, we could have more of a breakdown by next week. I mean, next meeting. Uh, so I'll, um, we have to pull that plan out and, and go forward with it on the select board level anyway. So I'll just put that down. Thank you. Um, yeah, the next thing I have is the Tilton Library renovation project. It might be good just to get 
someone in for the Tilton Library for the next one, um, just to kind of go over that. Um, I think the trustees might actually be meeting right now, um, but uh, yeah, might be good to get someone in for the next one. Um, I think uh, we'll have more information on this, obviously, as we go forward, but um, I had just gotten an email this week that they are confirmed getting the money in. Oh, July. okay. And, uh, you know, request for a special town meeting. So, um, yes, I think we need to break down what, what is going on with this project. Um, the next item was the police department HVAC system. Um, not sure if we had anything outstanding for that. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything in my notes from the last meeting. Um, let's see here. And then some of the next stuff I have in the packet here is uh, some of the stuff for the school. So I think the last time we uh, talked about um, a dishwasher, and I think uh, so, something else as well, but can see if uh, Ken gets here, if he might be able to elaborate on some of those things. If not, we can just table that for the, the, the next meeting. Um, oh, and then the next thing I, I guess we have in here is the senior housing. Um, that's going to be year, uh, we're gonna put that in the schedule, but that's not for this year. This is that, I believe that's fiscal 24. Uh, four or five. Okay. I'm going to. Yeah, I think uh, in the paperwork it says 2024. Yeah, so th that's fine. Yeah. And, and Mark, to go back, I think we also discussed last time, and I think that would be happening the flooring upgrades. Yep. 22,200. 22, oh, it will be? Okay. I think that, along with the dishwasher, was what we spoke about. That ha That needs to happen. Because they're, okay. you know, the, they're doing the flooring every couple of years just to replace all the bad flooring. So I think and, that's... And, and really, yeah, and the dishwasher is not uh, heating up to the proper level, so it actually is a safety issue. Yeah, I heard that might have come with the school. It gets getting a little old. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think so. All right. Seems like it's still referred to the new school. <laughs> Pretty good for 30 years. Wish mine lasted that long. The, the other ongoing project for the school is the restroom upgrades. Those have been a continuous okay. project. So that, that's a continuation. Great. Um, the next one was the sidewalk repairs. We've already talked about that a bit. Um, oh, yeah, then we have the demo of the uh, current town hall um, and you know replacing that with the new senior center. Um, do we have any updates on that? Uh, well, that we need to discuss. Uh, we, will, we will by the end of the month, hopefully. Um, we're gonna, you know, go with our hands out. We we uh, have a basic design of forty two hundred square feet um, that gives us um, four hundred four hundred dollars a square foot. I think is very generous. Um, dollar per square foot. Um, it seems to be, that seems to be legit uh, from MMA, uh, you know, finding out from MMA. So uh, could be higher, but um, I think out here, we're going to get away with $400 per square foot. So that gives us $1.3 million building addition, and then 1.3 to um, upgrade the current building. So I think you know, that's what we're going for. And we'll have some more information on that. Uh, that seems to be something that feels legitimately what we should be pursuing. Are we still targeting something in 2026 for that? Or is that going to be sooner? I, yes, I believe this is going to be 2024. Because oh, okay. it, it will be, um, we're, we're hoping to use CIPC money. We're hoping to use green energy money and um, hopefully qualify for um, Natalie Blaze um, Municipal Building Project. Um, so we'll see what we can put together for a combination. Um, obviously we'll push it out 
if we don't have a good lead. But the CIC um, met, CCI, excuse me, CCI met um, Monday night, and um, I think we have a pretty good game plan. So we'll see what, what our results are at the end of the month, you know, on the tw um, after the MMA conference. Okay, awesome. Um, the next up in the packet is the um, Senior Center Grammar School Town Hall Municipal Use. Um, well, um, again, there was consensus that the uh, town hall is the least, a uh, current town hall is the least attractive building um, and the least uh, acceptable building to upgrade because, you know, it's, it was cobbed together and was poor design. And, but clearly, if we don't have any money, then, you know, three or 400,000 would go a long way to renovate it for senior use because it is single floor, all that kind of stuff. But it makes sense um, if we have the ability to get a grant that we build a brand new or a waiver with a library project that we would build out some kind of community senior center that would, you know, be more along the lines of like Hadley's that Denise um, had visited that would be, um, every room would be useful to a program versus this is what space you have, you got to try to fit it in here. So we're, we're, again, we won't really have any information whether that is this year project, because obviously you can't move in to, um, you know, the new, the old senior center <laughs> and renovated it and get it done before this year. So this could be like a 25, you know, year 25 or 26, really. Okay. Because this will be done after we renovate the current closed senior center and then move town hall over there, then rip it down and then rebuild, hopefully, or renovate. I don't know. We'll see. There's that makes sense. Yeah. I, that, that, oh, what's it? What was that? I said there's a lot of balls in the air on this. And we really yeah. don't have, we don't have very much information until we see what's available and what we can squeeze out of infrastructure projects. Okay. Um, the next item in the packet is the wastewater treatment plant um, upgrades, the phase one and phase two stuff. Um, I know that uh, Trevor kind of gave an update on that uh, during the last meeting. Um, Skip and I, had, uh, Skip, Skip was at the meeting with me um, earlier today and um, Really, what we have to decide is the select board, which we will decide next week. We have to talk about it some more. There's really about $9 million left to be done all together to get every, everything done at the sewer treatment plant in South Deerfield. We have about $4.2 million left in our original, um, original you know, allocation of $19 million. So... We're hoping that we will get infrastructure uh, money in this next phase because uh, we are truly Chevrolet ready and we have a really good contractor already on, on site that has been really working very hard and very well with us and um, coming in uh, at budget or under budget considering, um, you know, the situation with, you know, a prices of, you know, materials and all that. So we have to decide what we're going to do. And um, I think we will do a change order. In my, my, this is just my personal opinion. It does make sense to make a change order so we can get more done sooner and um, have less left over and that we are out hustling USDA funds for more of a grant versus using up our 19 million that's already been appropriated. So we're hoping that will come together. We'll, we are moving forward with it. So this is truly a fiscal year 23 project, but we don't know how, it, how much is gonna be a change order that will be this year, or we're gonna you know, do it in fiscal 23. So Skip, does that make, did I summarize it halfway clear? That's, <clears throat> I would, yes. 
Okay. Do we need to discuss anything about the other one, Skip? I, I, I know that during the last meeting, I think you or someone else might have wanted to put a placeholder in for um, what we're doing for Old Deerfield. To, is there anything else to discuss there? Well, for Old Deerfield then, I would put in for fiscal 25 or 26, I would put in okay. 15.5 million. That's what the upgrade of Old Deerfield is. There are other alternative actions that are two or three times that amount of money. And I just, we aren't probably gonna entertain those. Okay. That's a discussion. I would, I would, That's my, sorry, personal I, opinion. my personal opinion. Um, a question on the old Deerfield plant. How many uh, private residences or buildings are on that? Do you know? Only, only about eight to 10. Uh, and and okay. they are decreasing. So there has to be um, some kind of solution. Um, that so this might be a little bit off the wall, but I don't know if there's if there would be room for those residences if the if the town worked with them to install private septic systems and then turn the plant over to the rest of the users. That has been, that has been discussed because if you took. Okay. If you took those residents and you put in a septic system, it would be like a quarter of a million dollars and then we're done. However, right. I don't know legally if we can do that. Um, I had had some thoughts of a separate uh, sewer district and then the nonprofits could figure out a way to um, use their user fees to loan themselves some money from their endowments or whatever to make this happen. but. We, we will have to do something uh, and that's under discussion. Okay, yeah, thank we you. Don't wanna, we don't wanna ruin our relationship with the um, nonprofits, but I, I- No, 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 I don't, yeah. But I have to tell you that I can't even imagine politically that we could go to town meeting and ask for the $33 million uh, debt exclusion for, um, you know, a sewer treatment plant that does not service taxpayers. So I, I don't know. I, it's not worth discussing at this point because it, we got to come up with some kind of solution. Yeah. yeah and, and also like that, that can't originate here at this committee either. Um, I was just wondering like uh, if we need a placeholder, like if there's a request coming, that's the only reason why I'm asking. I, yeah. I would, I would put in, I think it's legit to put in upgrading the sewer sewer plant because we have to do something. Mm -hmm. So to, to not even list it is not appropriate. Right. Which is, and that's the only reason why I'm asking. Yeah. And Denise, I know you had your hand up. Yeah. No, I was just going to just comment. I mean, you know, $33 million, the potential of ruining a relationship. I know which one I would vote. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to be, I know we're trying to I'm be diplomatic. Trying to be, yeah. Diplomatic in the sense that, you know, the nonprofits, they can't, you know, they do do, they do not have to do a single thing by law. Right. So, and we do, we do have to have a working relationship with them. Of course, but, but not to the tune of $33 million. That's, no. But anyway, yeah. I mean, we're struggling with just the 19 and we haven't even spent yeah. the entire 19. Okay. And we still have a lot to do in South Deerfield still. And I, you know, to take on a project of the scope of 33 million is just not yeah. going to happen in my mind. I'm not, I'm not standing out in the dump and handing that out. If people <laughs> thought they were crazed with, you know, the, the South Deerfield plan, I can't imagine what the complaints would be if we were trying to hand out, you know, come out and vote and support the $33 million sewer. Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't go over. No, no. So I'm, I'm not worried about it. We'll, we'll come up to some kind of resolution, but I, I would definitely say that it should be at least 25 and maybe 26 there's no we don't have any engineering done on it and and that in itself takes a year and that in itself also takes a vote to spend money to hire an engineer to design a plan mm -hmm. then you go out and you you know then you have to bond it and you know i mean get a debt exclusion then bond it and all that kind of stuff so i'm not that's way out i think it's not going to happen in a year or two all right. Good. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, and then all we have left in the packet then is the senior center repairs for the FY22 um, CIPC requests. Um, I think we already took care of the senior center stuff, didn't we? Um, that's happening. I just don't know how much is actually going to be spent. I mean, we appropriated it. Um, we're hoping Deerfield Academy will help us with it. There will, will be some purchases. Casey, do you know how much estimated of the 150 that was appropriated for the senior repairs, senior center repairs at the church? Or do we have an estimate of how much that actually we think we might be spending out of that? We don't because there's a couple things we have to have in place. Um, hi, Mark. I'm sorry about my email situation. Um, the there's a couple things we need to consider having in place, and that's an MOU, and we need to work out some of some of those details in the MOU. So I need some information back from John before I can definitively tell you what that is. Okay. Good. Uh, and then the, the last item here um, would be the backstop repairs. Um, is there anything else we need to do with these? So can I just ask a question? Sure. Um, I was confused about the backstop repairs. I thought it was the purview of the school committee. <laughs> so I asked Darius if we could talk about it because he's got more information than I do or and Ken I wasn't able to connect with Ken about it and since he's not here I don't feel comfortable but okay I, I just before you guys not that it isn't there the reason it's there is because the select board told me to put it in there but I guess there's back and forth that's in the the history of this that I don't really understand so I was trying to get some information from Darius um and I just want you to know that, you know, if something more comes up about it, I'll share that. I just don't have it all. I mean, Darius just got back from vacation too. We're, we were concerned about it being a safety issue. Somebody might get hurt. So we wanted to get it addressed. Right. I just don't, I want to do it in such a way that, that people aren't, that it doesn't become a, uh, we're stepping on your toes thing. Because I don't know what it, I, I literally don't know if that's the case or not. Maybe Skip does. No, I don't know that I know. We have, as far as I know, we have three backstops. And I assume we're talking about the one that's on the elementary school property. And if that's the case, it's on the elementary school property. So someplace along the way, we need the, uh, we need Darius. Yeah, uh, this, on the that's the one that has the wire hanging. Yeah, it has the that was the reason I called him. Yeah. yeah. Somebody else told me that. Question. I'm not a sports person per se. <laughs> I have no clue what, what the backstop actually is. Is it what, that like big wire cage? I don't know what it is. Behind the home plate. Oh, okay. So it's like a big wire. Yeah, big. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Hey, some, yeah. Well, I don't watch baseball. Well, there's some hanging wire, and we were talking oh. about that. Yeah, and just snip it off. Wow. Somebody <laughs> doesn't do something. Yes. I'll go over with my wire cutters. Get rid of it. Denise is going to take care of the problem. <laughs> Done. Wow. Well, I just don't want anyone to get hurt. No. Yeah. It's gross. Um, I mean, somebody <laughs> should have been looking after that. Um. All right, so uh, I guess, Casey, while you're here, I think there may have been some discussion last time about the North Main Street project. I was just wondering if there were any updates about that. So yes, there are some updates. The, we, the engineer, our zoning attorney for the project, myself and Carolyn presented the application for site plan review and stormwater to the planning board this past Monday. And it, it was a fairly robust presentation. There were lots of questions. The planning board ultimately voted to conduct a, to have a peer review conducted on the site plan requirements and the stormwater and hopefully allow that, hopefully that under the under the regulations that would include some information that the Conservation Commission 
um, could use, but CONCOM has their own process and they haven't seen anything yet. So the, process, the project has been pitched. We know there's gonna be questions. With a peer review, we're gonna to have to have responses. So they continued the meeting to February. What day was it, Denise? 7th, 7th. 7th. So they continued it to February 7th and we're finalizing the scope okay. in our office. So right now, but I will say from a financial perspective, after talking to the engineers and to Jim Martin, our attorney, and and working with Carolyn, I think we don't know what the cost is going to be yet, because as everybody understands, supply chains have been disruptive. Materials are way more expensive than everybody expected. So I know that there's several of us officials that are worried about what the costs would be and how we mitigate those. And so we would like to be in a better position to bid this in early, maybe mid-March, but we may not be there. And so that cost thing is the outlier that I would love to be able to give you more information about, but I can't. That's fair. Part, part of that, um, we had talked about the sidewalk projects and in my mind, I don't really feel comfortable going forward with this park project until we have, um, really made up our minds that we're going to do the sidewalks um, and have a sidewalk from frontier to the park for safety issues you know i mean it's seriously a safety you know okay. issue so we're going to have we have sidewalks as a project but that particular part of the sidewalks is definitely going to get done and then um bikeways which is not seriously very much money but you know, bike path, uh, you know, bikes printed out, bike lanes printed out on um, North Main and, and some sidewalks, at least on North Main, would be done. We just don't have an estimate of the cost of that sidewalk project to the park from Frontier to the park. So that would be part of the sidewalk project. And then based on the expense and how much Chapter 90 money is, Coming in normally, uh, we get around three hundred thousand, and roughly from Chapter ninety money, and um, that goes towards our asphalt pavement management plan that we have sorted out, and everybody's in line for that. So, if we get um, more money, which I I feel the indications are from two to three times that, um, so what do we do with the extra money and that extra money would probably use for culvert replacements so the roads don't continue to collapse but all, as, and as a match to our you know trying to get mvp funds for open bottom culverts and you know increasing capacity and that kind of thing but also towards the sidewalk project so it will be um I mean, as soon as we hear any, you know, what any figures are coming out, usually what happens is the governor announces what uh, the chapter 90 money is going to, or chapter uh, 90 program is going to be handing out at our MMA conference uh, in his speech. He usually gives us indications of what he's going to um, put in his budget and what kind of chapter 90 money we're getting. So we will again, know that hopefully by the time we have our next meeting and that will indicate how much is going to be done or allocated to the sidewalk project so i mean i'm sorry there's no more definitive information other than my guesswork i have a question so you know just talking about safety and um what happens and i don't know if this is appropriate since i am on the playing board but what about um, any type of speed bump? You know, I thought about it yesterday. I was going through Northampton, and they don't have the same type of speed bump as they have in Old Deerfield, which is, which are really fun on my bike. <laughs> but the ones in Northampton, they're brick and they're not as high, but they do make you slow down. I was just curious if that is something that could be looped in with the sidewalk project. I I think that it would be part of all your upgrading for safety and okay i mean we're that's part of making it more walkable mm -hmm. and sociable and but it's just people need to feel safe they need to well, be, and have a wide open yeah. pavement does not make you feel safe so 
you yeah. try to define your areas. The reason why the, the bumps are in Old Deerfield are as yeah. expensive as they were is because Deerfield Academy paid for them and they right. put them in. Right. So, right. You know, but it certainly does make you slow down. That's for sure. I mean, <laughs> make you want to go the other way, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they're effective we actually did a, we have it, i mean you can ask john Bachork, but at least two accidents of you know of kids being hit were yes. have been prevented or i mean truly mitigated because of them so yeah i mean there was a couple incidents already that really resulted in no injury because of it you know people were going so slow well they also need to get off the cell phone look yes yeah. Kids just don't look, but exactly. that's why it's important to, you know, a lot of this stuff is safety related. So I'm a hundred percent for that. All right. Um, well, that's, that's everything in the packet. Um, I guess, uh, you know, Casey, now that you're here, uh, I know we had a spreadsheet last year. I'm not sure if that was something that Jack had made or um, if, if uh, you had made, but do we have a, an electronic copy of that that we can edit just to rank everything for the okay, we do, cool. we, do. Awesome. we have an excel spreadsheet that we can use and basically they had created it and printed it out for us in pdf form so brenda and i recreated it and made some adjustments um there's some things that i think we could adjust functionally so that you can track sort of what priorities, because they had discussed that last year, um, creating a priority column. There may be other ways to identify that. And maybe, Mark, if you look at it, you can streamline it. So I'm happy to send it to you. Yeah, sure, that would be great. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have anything else they want to discuss? Or uh, possibly a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. I hope so. Second. I'll right. stay until nine. Come on, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was sad. late. I didn't actually see it on my calendar until late. He had sent me an email. I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. Casey, Casey can you? Um, we, we decided our next meeting is going to be um, January 25th at 6 30. So could you um, post that? successfully that would be great oh you're muted um i will ask you a question that came up in the office and i think you talked to jennifer about the posting thing so i'll let her know that you're planning to meet generally if there's specific items that we that you would like to see on an agenda and you don't have an agenda for them um put that together and she usually fixes the zoom stuff so i'm going to talk to her before we finish processing a posting for you sure. um because i want to make sure that a we have the space and b because it's becoming it's becoming persnickety now and b that we properly have the language because it should go to her first before it goes to postings yep um so I'll check the calendar and I'll ask her if we can talk about it so we can get you. And then all I need to know is, is it going to be remote, hybrid, in person? I would say remote. Um, I think the next one should probably be remote given how crazy things are getting right now. And then I, I would probably have a preference towards it being hybrid so people can choose which one they want to do. Um, but I, I, I think for, you know, for a while it's, probably going to be um, remote and hybrid. OK. We've talked hybrid about this. Fine with me if you can do that. Well, we're, nice what we're hybrids. oh, I'm, we haven't started our Omicron variant here yet. As far as we can tell, it's still all Delta. So um, I think we're going to see a huge spike, but and it will be go way up and then it will come down within a month or so. But yep. we just haven't started it yet. So and I, I had assumed that would start at least this week, um, you know, from people coming back from holiday, you know, vacations and gatherings and stuff. So we're still sequencing and we'll just keep following it. We'll have more information again, hopefully the next meeting uh, about what's happening. 
All right. Yeah, Casey. What time is the meeting on the 25th? 6.30. 6.30. Cool. I'm that, copying you on my email to Jen. Mark. Um, it's going to be right after the finance committee meeting. All right. So about that motion to adjourn. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, I guess we have it seconded. So I'll just go through uh, and um, through everybody here. So um, Skip Sobieski. Uh, yes. Uh, Carolyn Ness. Yes, I. Uh, Denise Mason. Aye. Skip Olmsted. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone. Great. Happy New Year, Alex and Casey. Happy New Year. Thank you. Have a good night.